We here understand the meaning of letting go and acceptance. When we pray hard, God puts acceptance in our hearts. When you pray hard about something spiritual, you will find yourself saying at the end, God, do whatever pleases you. Your will be done, not my will. I know that you will do the best. God gave you these feelings. You were going to fight with God saying, stop postponing. Don't you see how much I've prayed about this issue? But when you pray hard, you find yourself saying something different. One of the blessings of prayer is surrendering to God's will, not answering the prayer. Miracles are easy for God. They are the easiest. But the most important thing to God is growing up and learning how to depend on Him and how to surrender and to not worry. He has something in His hands and you want nothing. You only want Him and His kingdom. Thus we understand what Paul said from prison in Philippians. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He also said, as if he was in heaven, Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. God always does above all that we ask. He doesn't do ordinary things. This power is activated by prayer. You will change, your peace will increase, your dependence on God increases, and you ask for nothing as long as He is with you. You say, everything is on you. Children, service, health, money, problems. I won't talk about earth. How can I leave heaven and think about this stuff? Isaiah said, Lord, you will establish peace for us, for you have also done all our works in us. Everything we are supposed to do, he does it for us. We can't change ourselves, he does. If we can't raise our children, he will. If we can't fix the world, he will. You have also done all our work for us. The Holy Father said that answering the prayer is related to how hot the prayer is. Not all prayers are considered true. We say, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. This needs a true prayer. It is the hot prayer from the heart that contains crying to God. Lukewarm prayers, which we all do, have weak results. Don't expect big changes from it. How can we get this heat? Why were the saints' prayers powerful, but ours are rarely good? Every once in a long time, we pray with heat, and we say, One time I prayed great at church during the Divine Liturgy. Or I might say, One time I prayed beautifully in the middle of the night. We can easily remember these times because they happen so rarely. This is shameful because we can reach these hot prayers every day. The first source of this heat is love. If you love God, all your prayers will be powerful. You will live a romantic story with God. You know people who live a romantic love story. This period in their lives is different from all the rest of their lives. God wants us to live like this and live with Him like a bridegroom. If you reach this, prayer will be beautiful automatically. Everything will be good because there is love. Our lukewarm attitude is because of less love. Humility is the second thing that heats up prayer. The tax collector beat his chest because he prayed from his heart because he was humble. The sinful woman cried on Christ's feet because she was humble. Our self-satisfaction is what makes our prayers cold. We see ourselves as good and better than others. We feel that prayer is something extra we give to God. This feeling is suffocating us and preventing us from enjoying prayer. The person who feels that he is a beggar and that he and that he doesn't deserve to say God's name, prays with heat. And this heat is what gives the answer and joy and makes you see Christ himself. Hot or zealous prayer also comes from trust, faith. Hebrews chapter 11. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Talk with God and say, I trust that you love me. I am sure even if you don't answer, or if problems are increasing. I have faith in you. I trust you, even if it seems that you don't hear me. God likes this attitude, but we doubt him and his love. Why is that? 
Will we start over after all what we saw from God? We have experience with Him, but He likes it when we say, Do whatever pleases you. Whether you answer or you don't answer, I believe that you love me. Abraham took his son to sacrifice him per God's command. He said, I believe in God. If God wants to bring him back from the dead, he will raise him back up. God loves me. He never makes any mistakes. Impossible. Even if he tells me to sacrifice my son, he is perfect. What God does is always right. I will take Isaac and slaughter him, and I will return with him. I don't know how, but I will return with him. As soon as Abraham raised the knife, God told him, Stop. Good job, because you pray with faith. To use language of the Bible and of the saints, hot prayer means being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Be filled with the Spirit. This is the goal for all the Christian life. Praying, reading the Bible, going to church, etc. All have one goal, which is being filled with the Holy Spirit. If this happens, you will be like Christ. You will be a saint and go to heaven, and all your requests will be answered. Being full of the Holy Spirit appears in prayer. But take care, sometimes it becomes fake by being just emotional reactions. Hot prayer that is a result of true humility and love can't be fake. Then he said, in the Psalm 20, May he grant you according to your heart's desire. Does this mean that he will do whatever we desire? What if my heart is impure and I ask for something bad? This phrase means that your heart's desire will be like God's desire because of your many hot prayers. So you take what you desire. Meaning, when you pray well, God, through the Holy Spirit, puts in your heart all what He will give to you and then answers your desire. St. Augustine said, God moves His Holy Spirit by our efforts. When we make an effort in prayer, the Holy Spirit speaks in us, or as St. Paul said in Romans, the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You don't know why you said these, these words. It's not you who guide the prayer, but the Holy Spirit. He tells you God's desire, so you will surely be answered. So, he grants you according to your heart's desire, because your heart is like his. Let's say it again. One may think that he can ask God for a million dollars because this is what his heart desires. No. He will give you your heart's desire when your heart becomes like his heart. When you pray well, a change happens inside. You won't care about these million dollars anymore. Your heart will change so money, pride, revenge, bad desires, etc. won't be in it. Then what will be in your heart? Lord, let all people know you. He will give you this. Lord, let this or that person repent. He will give you this. Lord, solve this person's problem. So he will give you according to your heart, because your heart's desires are according to his heart. Prayer is what did that. Your prayers will be answered because your heart is different. You live happily all the time because God answers all your prayers. All what you ask is according to his plan and heart. You were programmed correctly. So you then have the keys to heaven and you start opening heaven door by door and you find blessings come raining down with your prayers. The pure heart, which resembles God's heart, loves all people. He wants all people to go to heaven no matter what they have done or messed up. In conclusion, answering the prayer won't be the goal of prayer anymore. I hope you pray this psalm every day, but when you say, May the Lord answer you, say, I mean that I want to go to heaven. Do whatever you want now, but bring me to heaven. When you pray the psalm, answering the earthly matters won't become a goal for prayer. You will forget about them. You will forget to pray for your healing or your financial problems because you love God, so your health and or your problems are not problems anymore. This will happen automatically. You now pray because you love God, not to have more or less of things. Prayer is a love relationship with God. David said in Psalm 27, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his holy temple. All this needs faith. Without faith it is impossible to please him. All what you ask in prayer with faith will be granted to you. Ask yourself in prayer, do I really believe that he hears me or not? 
If you are sure of this, continue your prayer. Remind yourself, of course he listens and cares for what I say. He knows my weakness and has everything in his hands. Sometimes we pray without thinking about faith in God. We just are used to praying with the same words, like the nighttime prayer, for example. If you pray for this same prayer, but with all your heart, you will change and change the world. And even if you can't pray, tell him, God, teach me how to pray. Increase my faith to be able to pray. Put love in my heart to be able to pray well. Put humility in my heart to feel the heat of prayer. Make prayer itself a part of your prayer. Whoever prays doesn't need anything else. If you pray, you own heaven and earth and don't need to solve problems because you won't have problems if you know the road of prayer. And glory to God forever. Amen.